ברשות מורי ורבותיי, וזה במשילות השם, אורי דה צ'ווישיו, אבודי. וואל, בפרשה, דה ג'וש טרייד, זה באות דה מרגלים, דוס פיפל דת משה אבינו סנד, שספאי ארץ ישראל. And uh, unfortunately, they, they went and they came back and they spoke a lot of Lashon Hara about Eris Israel. And uh, unfortunately, because of the Lashon Hara that they spoke about Eris Israel, the Jews had to stay 40, day, 40 years in the desert. Hashem punished them for each day that they spy Israel. Their punishment is one year in the, in the desert. 40 days that they spy Israel, and during those 40 days, they spoke bad each day. So Hashem gave them. 40 years to suffer in the desert, to die in the desert, not to see Eris Israel anymore, and only the new generation who were born. In the, in the, in the desert, they left, they had the zikhut, they had the merit to see Eris Israel. So, how it's possible that such a thing could happen? Here we are talking about Jews that they were big tzaddikim. So how can you imagine big tzaddikim that they were in Egypt, they saw the, all the prey that Hashem he, he gave to the Egyptian, he saw how Hashem he knocked down Pharaoh, they saw when they crossed the sea, how Hashem split the, the sea in twelve parts. They saw so many miracles, the man coming from the Shemaim, the food, water. They did not need nothing in the desert. They had everything. They were very spoiled. How it's possible? To, I mean, they saw the reality, they saw the truth, they saw uh, that the, why they were 40 days in the desert, they saw how Hashem protected them from the, the seven nations of the Kna'anim. I mean, there were 12 people. You know, just imagine 12 people that walk together. They attract the eyes of everybody. And uh, of course, they spoke only Hebrew. They did, this, they did not speak any other language. So, how can they come and speak bad about his Israel, right? the Holy Land? Our rabbi said that Caleb, he went to Hebron. He went to, to pray on the grave of, uh, of, uh, of Abraham, it's Yaakov. It's incredible to believe that, that maybe he went for a few hours. What nobody asked him, where, where, where you been? I think probably he told them that he was going to go to Hebron, to the Ma'arqa Mahpela, to pray there. No one went with him. I mean, nobody told him, ah, Abraham is Haki Yaakov, our grandparent, our grandparent, let's go to, to the grave and let's pray there. Nobody went with him. Nobody was interested. It's very hard to believe this. Let's give me 
And the idea is about this space that Moshe Abinu sent to spy Israel. But according to the Torah, they were holy people. They were kshirim. They were tzaddikim. So what happened exactly? My friend Rashi said that the previous parasha we talk about Miriam. Miriam, uh, when she saw that Moshe Rabbeinu divorced Tzipora, why? Because he was the prophet, he was busy with the Jews, so he couldn't be and with the Jews to teach them Torah and to be in his house. So he had to divorce. He had to to separate himself from his wife. It was a big sacrifice that Moshe Abinu he did for the Bnei Israel, the Jews. And Tzipurash was a big tzaddikit. And I'm sure that Tzipurash agreed with Moshe Rabinu for this kind of separation. So Miriam and Aaron, they've been talking together about Tzipurah. Why Moshe Rabinu? And the argument was, why Moshe Rabinu divorced Tzipurah? Because he's the prophet. So they, they said, well, the prophets too. Well, as well, uh, uh, had has a, 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 a job here in the desert. Aaron and Moshe and Miriam, the three of them, the talk of the Jews. Miriam, she was the she was the, the leader of the all the women in the desert. And the Moshe and Aaron, they took care of the old Jews. So Miriam said to Aaron, she had a good argument. We did not divorce. So why Moshe did he divorce? And according to the rabbis, Miriam, when she spoke to Aaron, she did not speak on behind the face of Moshe. She spoke to Aaron in front of Moshe. It's like they were the three, the three all together. And Miriam said to Aaron, Aaron, I don't understand why our brother he divorced his uh, wife Tzipporah because of the Jews, because he take care of them, because he teach, teach them Torah. We too, we take care of them. We too, we teach them the word of Hashem. I teach the ladies, you and Moshe you teach to the Jew, to the men. So why Moshe divorce? And ah, Miriam, she spoke in front of Moshe to Aaron. And even that, she was punished. She had the lepers. Why she was punished with lepers? Because Hashem said to, to them, If uh, Moshe did wrong, I could tell him. If I didn't tell him why he separated himself with, for, from his wife, he would, if I didn't tell him, so there is no need that you tell him. I mean, that was the argument of Hashem. Hashem knows everything. Hashem if he saw that it was a problem why Moshe separated himself from his wife, so Hashem could tell Moshe Abel, don't do that. But if Moshe did it, and Hashem carried on talking to Moshe Rabbeinu, and Hashem carried on talking to Moshe Rabbeinu, that means that Moshe Rabbeinu, what he did, it was not wrong, it was right. So that was the argument of Hashem to Miriam and Aaron. So why you spoke bad about May, May, May Moshe, May Moshe, the one that I trust him, the one that I believe, the Eman Biti, the one that I love. So Hashem was, was very angry against them. So because Miriam, she was the one who started to talk, so she, was, she had lepers. Now, I would like to ask you one question. 
But we need to ask you one question. I know to talk behind somebody is Tashunara. But here, he did not talk behind uh, Miriam. She did not talk behind Moshe Abinu. She talked in front of Moshe Abinu. So what the Tashunara here? It's like I'm talking to somebody. It, 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 it's like when the three people and I talk to somebody, uh, it's, you know, I talk to him about an, an, an agreement, argument that I, I have with this man in front of him. This is not a shonara. So why the Torah accuse Miriam as a shonara? And she had said, leprous the, during seven days. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? The, you know what the Torah said? Remember what Hashem did to Miriam? Because she talked bad about Moshe, she had leprous. Can you imagine that? She did nothing. She didn't speak bad against Moshe. First, she said something that it was real. That's why Moshe separated from his wife. For no reason, because she is a prophet, so we are prophet too. And besides, she spoke, Miriam spoke to Aaron in front of Moshe, so there is no rational higher. But even that, the Torah considered as a rational Wow, 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 wow. Why? You know why? Because Miriam and Aaron, they know that Moshe Rabbeinu will not answer. He will not take his, his defense himself. Moshe Rabbeinu ve'a ish Moshe Anav. Moshe was so humble, so Moshe Rabbeinu will not answer for any argument against him. And because he will not answer, so it's like a rational. Because Moshe Rabbeinu was a tzaddik, he was a man that he never defend himself. I mean, he will defend Hashem. If somebody he will do something against Hashem, Moshe Abinu, he, he is the one to, to fight for Hashem. But for himself, never. I was just thinking, imagine, if somebody, God forbid, don't do a mitzvah that Moshe Abinu teach us, it's like we talk Lashon Ara about Moshe Rabbein. Can you imagine that? If you read the, la, the, the laws of Lashon Ara from the Chafetz Chaim, it's incredible. It's incredible. Can you imagine Moshe Rabbein? Moshe, Torah Tzibala no Moshe, Morasha Kilat Yaakov. Moshe Rabbein give us the Torah as a heritage. Just imagine that God forbid, we don't respect Torah and Mitzvot. So it's like we speak Lashonara about against Moshe Rabbein. Because it's his Torah. Hashem gives the Torah to Moshe Rabbein. Zichron Sefer Torah to Moshe Abdi, the Prophet said. Remember the book that belonged to Moshe Rabbein. Because Hashem gives the Torah to Moshe Rabbein. And that should be said to Moshe Abinu, Moshe, because you sacrifice yourself for the Jews, for the Torah, so the Torah is yours. My Torah is yours. You know what the Devar to him said? Moshe, Moshe, is the same letter as Hashem. That means that the name of Hashem, he put it on Moshe. Can you imagine that? Just imagine, it's incredible, it's incredible. So that means, God forbid, if we don't respect any kind of mitzvah, it's like we declare that Moshe did not say that. It's like a Lashonara, a bad language against Moshe Rabbeinu. That, that Moshe, uh, what, what he did, what he said, it's not true. I can do this. And Moshe didn't tell us that mitzvah. And uh, 
never said that mitzvah. He never wrote it. It's written in the Torah. I mean, it's like talking. It's like denying what Moshe Rabbeinu wrote in the Torah. It's like, I don't do what Moshe said because it's not true. I, I don't believe in it. It's a rationale. So that means it not only we do, we talk bad about Moshe Rabbeinu, but we talk bad about Hashem as well. Because it's Hashem who gives the Torah to Moshe Rabbeinu. Can you imagine this? It's incredible, my friend. So now, we see that Miriam, she got punished for talking bad. For Hashem, she talked bad against Moshe Rabbeinu. What she said, she only said, why was she the Rabbi divorce? Uh, she would consider that as a rational. Why? Because Moshe Rabbeinu, he was a humble man. He would not answer. And because he would not answer, so why you, Miriam, you know your brother. You know your brother that he will not defend himself. You know your brother that anything that, that uh, could be against him, he will not defend himself. And if he, if he will not defend himself, so it's like you talk behind his back. It's a rational. And she was punished. So despite those people, they saw what happened to Miriam. That's because she said a small word against Moshe Rabbeinu. The Torah said, remember what, what Hashem did. He imagined. Miriam, she was a big tzaddikit. With the zikhut of Miriam, Moshe Abel was saved in Egypt. With the zikhut of Miriam, the Jews in the desert, they had water. And Miriam, she was not only punished with lepers, what a shame. Everybody was talking about her. Oh, 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 oh. Miriam, she was punished. Wow, 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 wow. Miriam, what she did? She talked bad about, her, about Moshe Abel. Then she punished her, and she's out out of the camp because they, she was not allowed to remain in the Jewish camp during the seven days that she had the lepers. So she was outside the camp alone, alone, seven days and seven nights. And not only that kind of punishment, Hashem, He told us, remember, for a small national that Miriam spoke against Moshe, look what he told her. My friend, my friend, to remember such a, such, such a, a punishment for a small things. How much we have to be careful, my friend, our rabbi said. So my friends, those spies, how can they, they, they just saw what happened to Miriam, what did not learn from her? And they spoke bad about Eretz Israel. You know, my friend, sometimes when you start to, to, to talk Lashonara, at the beginning, you don't want to speak too much. At the beginning, only you want to say a few things. At the end, when you start, the mouth does not stop. Yes, my friend. The mouth don't stop, and uh, and uh, and then uh, from a small rationale can become a big rationale. A person can even destroy a person, uh, all a family for a small rationale. I know a, a couple that a, a lot of I, I know a lot of stories for couples that they divorce for a small rationale. That uh, the wife she said against her mother-in-law, or the husband said against his father-in-law or mother-in-law. I know a lot of, a lot of, uh, uh, you know. Uh, I, I just yesterday, yesterday, it took me hours to do shalom between a couple that really they wanted to divorce. Finito, because the brother-in-law spoke bad against his brother-in-law. Two brother-in-laws. One spoke bad against the other. 
and uh, it was a big fight and a war and a divorce with four children. So I, I got involved for our, for nothing, really, for nothing, for it, it, for nothing. I mean, but as, as I said, for nothing can become something. And and uh, and then a divorce and then for children to suffer and then who knows the the circumstances or what can happen after. My friend, now our question is why did he not learn from Miriam? Because of a small national that she spoke against her brother and in front of her brother she she was punished. How did speak bad about Eris Israel? And you know Eris Israel, and he did not go to. It's a, it's, a, it's an insult not to go to be in Hebron to be next to the grave of Abraham. It's Yaakov, the godfather. And not to go there is incredible. It's incredible how it's possible. Well, my friends, those people, of course. They were tzaddikim, no doubt. They saw a lot of miracles, no doubt. There was only one problem. The problem was, Eris Israel is not like other nations. Eris Israel is a nation that there is mitzvot to accomplish if you live in Israel. I mean, you can live in America. You can live in France, in Europe, in China, in Africa, in Asia. You can live anywhere in the world. There is no mitzvot specific, special, according to the place where you live. And it's a, it's a, it's a, there is mitzvot if you live in Israel. Like the mitzvah of Shemitah. The Mitzvah of Shemitah, it's one, just one among the Mitzvot that we have to respect. A Shemitah that means if you live in Israel during six years, you can uh, work your lands, you can plant trees, you can do whatever you want, but the year number seven, your land should do Shabbat. What it is Shabbat? Like Shabbat, Shabbat, you not, we're not allowed to cook, we're not allowed to eat uh, something that we buy, we're not allowed to touch money, we're not allowed to drive. On Shabbat, we have to rest. We have to prepare all what we need on Friday for Shabbat. Shabbat, just go to synagogue, relax, sleep, study Torah, this is a walk if you want. Have a rest. Shabbat is Shvut. You have to sit. So Hashim he give us the same after seven, six years, it's Shabbat for the land. The land should not work. The Shafta Aritz. The land should have a rest. This is a mitzvah that only on Israel you do it. There is no way in the world that you can do it. There is other mitzvot, like uh, the Beit HaMikdash. We cannot build the Beit HaMikdash in America or anywhere in the world. The Beit HaMikdash only on Israel in a specific place, Jerusalem. Sacrifice as well. You cannot do, there is a lot of kind of sacrifice that you cannot do nowhere in the world, only in Yerushalayim and the Vitamin Dash. Today we don't have Vitamin Dash, there is no sacrifice. We have to go three times a year to the Vitamin Dash. On Pesach, on Shavuot, on Sukkot. So, you have this mitzvah too that you have to do. So can you, can, you, can you understand my friend? Those mitzvot, you cannot do them nowhere in the world. 
only on a rich society. So my friend, now you understand. When those 12 spies, they were, they want to spy Israel, they did not talk about the mitzvot that they are related to Eretz Israel. Usually, usually, you are in Eretz Israel, you are 12 people, you talk about what? The word Sadikim. You see 12 Sadikim. They talk about what? 12 Sadikim. They talk Torah, mitzvot. They talk about the Avot. Abraham Mitzhak Yaakov, they talk about history, Jewish history, Torah. Besides Yeshua and Caleb, that the words that they came, probably both of them, they talk Torah. The rest of them, that way they didn't speak Lashon Ha'avot Eretz Israel. The ten of them, unfortunately, instead of talking Torah, they went to spy, to visit. I mean, you can visit, and you can talk about the Shrach of Israel. I mean, why Hashem loved our society? Talk about that. Why Hashem he chose the Jews to give them our society? Talk about that. The, the promise that Hashem promises to Abraham, Isaac, Yaakov, is his our society. And they love our Israel. Talk about that. Why Hashem, it was the only land that he gave to 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 the Jews. When Hashem created the world, from where he started to create the world, from Yerushalayim, talk about that. There's a lot of things to talk about in the society. But they did not talk. Why did they not talk? Because it seemed like they didn't want to live in the society. For, for them, the society, there was nothing, no, no compliment about the society. What happened to them? Uh, this question come back again. Why all this? Why they hated it Eretz Israel? Why did not talk good about Eretz Israel? Why, did, why, 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 why all this? How Tzadikim can, can talk bad about Eretz Israel? That talking about Israel is like talking against the Torah. Talking against Eretz Israel is like you talk against the Torah. Because when Hashem created the world, He created the Torah too. And the Torah, there is mitzvot that they are related to our side. So that means those spies they are talking against the Torah too. Because by not living in our side, by talking bad about our side, that means that they don't want to do the mitzvot that they are related to Eretz Israel. So that means they are talking not only bad against Eretz Israel, but they are talking bad against the Torah itself. It's incredible. My friend, it's something unbelievable. What happened? So, how did he not learn from Miriam that for a few things that she, she said, I should punish her with the lepers. And now, they're talking, not only did not talk about every society, did not talk good things inside every society, but they started to talk bad things outside every society. The fact that they did not talk among them in every society about the Shvachim, a compliment that Hashem he did to every society that he involved mitzvot related to Eretz Israel. That means anyone who lives in Israel, he lives in the land. Each second that his foot are in Eretz Israel, he is doing a mitzvah. You walk four steps in Eretz Israel, it's a mitzvah. You should Eretz Israel. You accomplished a mitzvah in Eretz Israel. Wow. I mean, it's like a man that he is inside the sukkah. All his body he is in the sukkah. When you are in Eretz Israel, he said, all your body is in the mitzvah. 
you have on Eretz Israel, on the Mitzvah. There was a rabbi who came from uh, who came from uh, America by boat when he saw from far away the land of Eretz Israel, who was looking at it. And his students, they started to ask him to tell them a small Torah. He told them, what Torah can I give you? Now I am busy. After one hour, they approached Eretz Israel from far away. He looked at the sea, at the, the land from the sea, from the boat. So they asked him again. He told him, look, the Torah said that Hashem, his eyes is on Eretz Israel from the beginning of the year till the end of the year. And the, I'm looking to the beauty of this free, this mitzvah that it's free. I mean, sometimes you do a mitzvah, it, it, it took you time to do it, or it's, uh, you have to spend money to do it. And here, only by, by looking at Israel, by walking on Al Israel, you are doing a mitzvah. I mean, I, I have, for the moment, I have nothing to tell you. Now, I, I just enjoy of those mitzvot that Hashem give us, that if we do them, we are, we, we are doing a mitzvah. And it doesn't cost us no, not one dollar, nothing, nothing, not a sense. Just look at Al Israel, Walking in Israel, big in Israel, so can you imagine if you live there? Wow, wow, wow. Those people, my friend, because there is a reason why they've been bad. Some of the reasons, first, the Tsar is very strong. When there is a mitzvah that is very important, the Tzara is very strong. The Tzara, his enemy is somebody who's talk Torah. And the Tzara, he pushed the spies not to talk Torah, that it is related to our society, like Shemitah, like Korbanot, like uh, uh, sacrifice to talk about the Vitamin Dash, because the Satan knows if they start talking Torah, the Torah will protect them not to do, not to do any kind of sin. So he pushed them just to visit, to, to spy, by a Toro, tourists. Ay, 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 ay. My friend, how much we have to be careful in the summer when we go to visit something, when we go to Ritz, that we will always be careful where we go and that we will take with us the Tfilin, the Talit, a Gemara. So at least where, 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 where even we are, we have to connect also to the Torah. Otherwise, we will be, we will finish, we will end up like this spice with, with no Torah, where, wherever you go to visit, if there is no Torah, there is a danger. There is a danger. I must have to be very, very careful. My friend, those spy, unfortunately, there was so much, so much concern on visiting Earth Israel instead of the Torah said, when you walk, wherever you go, the Torah, you should read it, teach it, wherever you go. If you go to sleep in your house, outside, you walk, you travel. I'm so proud to see people in the plane with the Gemara. I said, we would watch it all the time, just television. Okay, you can study a little bit Torah. You're in the house. Make out of your house 
a little bit of Torah. Not only talking about uh, silly things. I mean, treat yourself. Teach to yourself that you'll be among <coughs> those who live according to the Torah. You know, I don't tell you to study Torah all day, but live your Judaism. This is Torah. You live your Judaism. It's that you do. It's that, it's that you study Torah. You keep kosher. You have a talit. You have a yamok in your head. You eat kosher. So, it's Torah. My friend, the, those spies, they were in Israel. I mean, there is mitzvot that are related to Israel. Israel. Talk about them. And because he didn't talk about them, they came. I speak rationally about Israel. And of course, according to the Zohar, the Zohar said that those spies, they said, well, instead of talking about Torah, not only what, and because they did not speak about Torah, you know what happened after? There is a Zohar who said, they started to talk, well, if uh, now we are the parents of the Jews, each one of us, of us is the parents of his tribe, if we go to Eretz Israel, we will lose our, we will lose our uh, leadership. There will be no one and the leader of his tribe, there will be only one king, to all of us. Can you imagine? They've been talking like that in front of Caleb. And Caleb, if he was from the tribe of Yehuda, Chutzpah. Chutzpah. So, my friend, you see, so they said, well, let's talk bad about Eris Israel, so Hashem will punish us, but at least we will, he will not give us Eris Israel, we will remain and stay in the desert, and uh, each tribe that he will have his own, uh, his own leader. There will, there will not be one king for everybody. Each tribe that he will be, he will have his own leader. Like each tribe that has his own flag. Each tribe in the desert, he, he was located, you know, in the desert, it was equitable. There were 12 tribes, three on one side, three in the east, three tribes in the, in the west, three tribes in the north, and three tribes in the south. And the, the, and, and the Shekhtina, the tribe of Levi, was in the middle, with the vitamin dash. So they said, it's beautiful like that. If we go to Eris Israel, who will go? This one to Elat, Tel Aviv, Yerushalayim, Be'er Sheva, uh, Kriyat Shmona, ba ba ba. We, we will not be all together. We will, we will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, all Eris Israel, we are all together. So let's talk bad about it. I mean, can you imagine? All this, because it is not speak goodness, the shvachim, the beauty of the Torah that Hashem related the Torah to Eretz Israel. I mean, Eretz Israel, the Torah, it's one. Incredible. And that, unfortunately, when somebody has his own nigiah, Concern. Well, because their concern was not to come to live in Eretz Israel. So, of course, they didn't watch, they didn't look, they didn't look what happened to Miriam. Sometimes, my friend, from the bad things that other people do, and the circumstances that happen to them, 
we learn from them. But unfortunately, sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes these people, they are so black, they are so concerned about themselves, they don't look, they don't see what happened to the other one. We know, my friend, smoking is dangerous. We know a lot of people dying from smoking. But there is people who smoke. I mean, they know it's dangerous. But they smoke. I know somebody who has a high diabetes. High di diabetic. Let's see, eating fruit, cakes. I tell him, you do insulin, how you, you can die. You don't care. Ah, I will not die. Why? Because he don't want to disconnect himself from the sugar. So he don't see the danger. He see what it's causing him. That's what happened to the, the spies. They did not see what happened to Marianne. They only saw what is good for them. What is good for them? Well, to walk, to enjoy, exercise, not talking Torah that it's related to Israel. At the end of that Avera, they came to speak bad about Israel with uh, uh, they had an idea. If we come to live here, we will lose our leadership for the moment each one is the leader of his uh, of his tribe. Well, when we, all of us will come here, we will lose our leadership. But if we talk bad, she will punish us. All right, okay. We will be the sacrifice for our tri tribe. She will punish us. We will die. But each tribe will are made in, in the desert and uh, they will have their own leader. They will not be one for everybody. It was bad. Very bad. That means what about the mitzvot that are related to Eretz Israel? Look, that, that way they become resigned. I mean, they only thought about their concern. They didn't think about all the, all the, all the cause of why Hashem liberated them from Egypt to bring them to Eretz Israel, to give them the Torah. And now, what about the Torah that is related to Eretz Israel? They don't want to accept it. They want to do only the mitzvot that are related from outside Israel. So why has we created the Torah? So why has we created Israel? So why has we choose Israel? All these different they were blind. Blind of their gava. Blind. They only thought about what it's concerned to them. Not anymore, but it's concerned all of them, all the Jews. What about Hashem? What about Eretz Israel? What about the Torah? What about, what about? All this, they were blind. He said like somebody, who threw an egg and a tomato, on the president. That man, he knew, he knew that they can put him in jail. Maybe they, they will kill him if you do that to a king. The sentence to death. So why, why he did that? Well, it's, it's, it's crazy. Because at the moment that he did what he did, he thought only about what, uh, what uh, he wants to put himself in the history. But if you die, there is, there is no history for you. People they will curse you. People uh, they, they think you're mad. What kind of history is this? When we think about Hitler, he is in history. What a bad history. Before you do something, think 
the circumstance of that thing. What's going to happen? Good things, bad things. Think you have a, you have a, you have a seher. My friend, I would like to tell you something. What was, what happened exactly between Miriam and Moshe Rabbeinu? They talk about Sipora. When was she divorced Sipora? And because she said that, she had a leprous. And those spies, they saw what happened to her. They didn't take any attention. As they spoke. They started to speak small national Arab. At the end, they spoke big Lashon Ara. They spoke against God, about against Hashem, against the Torah. I mean, yes, they spoke against the Torah because by not living in Eretz Israel, by avoiding to live in Eretz Israel, that Hashem give you, that means all what Hashem did from Egypt till now, for nothing, to stay in the desert. What about the mitzvot? What about the Vidavik Dash? What about the the sacrifice, what about the Shvita, what about all those mitzvot that they read it, related to Nehri Said, not to do them. My friend, they did not, they did not talk moral Musa for Miriam. You know why? Because they said, we don't understand why she punished Miriam. Because she spoke about Moshe, why he divorced Tzipora. Who, who is Tzipora? No, you understand? Who is Tzipora? Only a converted girl. Her father, he was a, a big priest of Abu Dazara. So, he, he did well. Moshe to divorce her. He did, a, he did a, a mistake to marry her. So he did well to divorce her. You understand? I think... That was the biggest Ashonara. He likes, he's like Zimri. Zimri Besilo. When he went with the girl of Midian, the, a Goya, and he said to Moshe Abeno, this Goya, this girl, she's permitted to me or not? So it's Moshe told him, no, she's not permitted to you. So he told Moshe, what about Sipora? Who permitted Sipora to you? And Moshe was shocked. I think this is the reason why the spy they did I should punish them very very bad. Why? They did not learn from from I mean I mean they were tzaddikim, but they did not learn from Miriam. You know why they did not not learn from Miriam? Because she spoke bad. They said Miriam finally why I should punish her? He shouldn't punish her. I mean, can you imagine this? They become kofrim. Why should we punish Miriam? What Miriam said? She spoke about Tzipora. Who is Tzipora? She was a Goya. So, she, she was a Goya. She was a Goya. And, uh, and, uh, and beside this, why Miriam she had to defend Tzipora? She should, Miriam, she shouldn't defend Tzipora. That Moshe Abino, he divorced her. I think Moshe Abino, he divorced her very well. Because when he married Tzipora, she was a Goya. Why did he marry the Jew? Can you imagine? Can you imagine what a Lashon Hara those people did? That way they didn't learn from Miriam. Because really, it's, it, it, it was hard to understand how it did it. The spy they did not learn from Miriam because they spoke Lashon Hara about Moshe Rabbeinu when he divorced his, his wife. She was, she was punished, she had a leprous, and, and so a lot from, from her that don't talk bad about Eretz Israel. If you talk bad about Eretz Israel, maybe it happened to you, like what it happened to her. No, didn't learn from that for them. Uh, the, 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 that kind of argument is not good. Because the defeat that Moshe, he did well to divorce Zipporah. Because she was not Jew. And uh, 
he realized that she she was not permitted to him. So what Miriam spoke against her, she didn't do well. But she punished her. Well, my friend, a man who speaks Lashonara, in the Lashonara, when he speaks Lashonara, he don't see what it doesn't concern him. He only say what it concerns him. He will not see something that it will be against him. It will, he will say on his feet that it will help his argument. A lot of times, think when you say something, are you saving your argument or are you saving your truth? If you are singing, if saving only your own argument, so you will not see the truth. But to see the truth, you have to see everything clear. My friend, I would like to wish you all the best. I shall bless you and take care. Now you will see a small film of the Rabbi Israel Ba'al Shem Tov Alav Shalom that he told, he teach us Ba'al Shem Tov one small thing. He teach us that every Jew has a connection with Akash Baruch. Why every Jew, even if a Jew is far away from Judaism, always he has a connection with Hashem. Why? Because as long as a Jew lives, Hashem he has a hope. Maybe. By being connected to him, we will come back to, to the derech of Hashem. So, and there is something else that you have to know. There is no Jew that not, not have a connection with Moshe Rabbeinu. How, how can we have a connection with Moshe Rabbeinu? Through a mitzvah that we do. Any kind of mitzvah that we do. So we have a connection with Akash Baruch. With Moshe Rabbeinu. Because the Torah is from Hashem, and he gave it to Moshe. So each one of us will have a connection, and there is no Jew that he doesn't do any mitzvah in his life. So all Jew had a connection with Moshe Rabbeinu and Akash Baruch. Unfortunately, the spies who went to spy outside, they took, they disconnect themselves from Moshe Rabbeinu and from Hashem by not talking Torah, and that it's related to Eretzai, by talking bad against Moshe Rabbeinu, so they disconnect themselves from Moshe, from the Torah, and of course from Hashem, so the punishment was very high. So because of them, we do Tisha B'Av every day, every year. Every day we remember the destruction of Beth Amigdash. And every year we do Tisha B'Av because that story that happened when the, the spies did a revolution against God and against Moshe Rabbeinu, it was in the day of Tisha B'Av. So Hashem, He said, He, told, he said, well, unfortunately, it will be Tisha B'Av till Mashiach comes. So the first Beit HaMikdash, the second Beit HaMikdash was destroyed. We are waiting for Mashiach. The repatriation for this kind of sin is to love every society, connect yourself to the mitzvot related to every society, and of course, even if you don't live in every society, have your mind in every society. You know, all the children that we do, we do them toward every society. So, even if we don't live in every society, we believe that one day Mashiach will come and it will bring us, all of us, to Israel. Hashem bless you. Take care.